everybody, this is Allison from DreamAlittleBigger.com and today I am going to show you how to do the Lark's Foot Stitch. If you can rock the double crochet and a chain, that's all you need to be able to do. Well, besides count. Double crochet, double crochet, chain, and count, and you're set. Um, this is one I did in pretty berry colors. This is one I did in neons. I'm not a big fan of it, but, I mean, you see the stitch. It's a pretty stitch. And I'm going to teach you how to do it today. Um, the first thing you need to do whenever you're doing your, your stitch um, is you have to decide on how long you want it to be, just like with any other any other crochet project. Um, whenever you're working up your, your length, you're going to work in multiples of four, and then you're going to add one to it for your base chain. Um, so uh, four plus one is five. Four times ten times plus one is forty-one. Um, just four multiples of four plus one is your base. Um, whenever you get going um, with your double crochets going the other way, you're actually going to double crochet in the fourth stitch from the hook. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And your first three that you've just passed are going to act as your first double crochet. You're going to double crochet again right next door. I don't know if you can hear that, but the cat is yelling at the other end of the house. And then you're going to chain once. This is the pattern that we're going to keep repeating on down the line. You're going to skip the next stitch and you're going to double crochet in the one right after it. You're going to do this two more times, maybe, someday. You're going to do this two more times for a total of three double crochets all nice and neat and in a row. And then you're going to chain one and you're going to keep doing this all yeah, lost count. You're going to do this all the way to the end. And I'll be back with you as soon as I've done that. Okay, so you made it all the way to the end with your double crochets and um, groups of three with a space in between. At the end, you're going to have three double crochets, and that last double crochet is going to end um, the row. To continue on, you're going to chain three. This will act as your first double crochet, and you're going to turn your work. Um, now what you're going to do is you're going to basically mirror everything that happened on the row below. Um, so we've got um, three, space, three, space. So we're going to... Um, work in three just above and then we're going to chain for our space we're going to hop over we're going to skip that space for the chain and in the, in the first from the next row the first of three I should say we're going to keep on with our three double crochets in a row after I finish this next double crochet I am going to chain one and I'm just going to keep on going until the end and I'll get back with you after that. And here we have our first and second rows. They mirror each other. The, um, double, the sets of double crochets and threes are directly above one another. The gap's the same. Um, we're going to change our color. I'm going from a dark teal to a light teal and we're going to get started with row three. You're going to chain four this time. Um, the other times you chained three, and that was so it would act as your first double crochet. But we are chaining four, one, two, three, four, because it's going to act as your first double crochet and your first chain. Um, instead of going right into the next stitch like you would normally do whenever you're going down the line, you're going to skip it, and you're going to double crochet in the one right next to it. So for this very first row, you start off with chain four and a double crochet and not the next stitch, but the one after. And this is where it starts to get fun. This is where you get your pretty, um, your, your spike that goes down that makes the stitch so nice. You're going to yarn over just like you normally would be. This is pretty much a double crochet like any other. Um, when you get here, 
you're going to have to do some shimmying so that it comes up so that you can actually um, complete your trip your double crochet without it getting real tight and weird on you um, and then you just finish it out like you normally would and see it starts that little spike pattern you've got in there that one's actually kind of tighter than I would have liked it but um, you're gonna double crochet in the stitch right next door and that finishes your first set of three you're gonna chain once you're going to skip the next stitch and you're going to double crochet in the one just after. Next you're going to do your big double crochet and I forgot to mention you're actually going in the bottom most gap whenever you're doing this big long double crochet. Work it up. Finish it off like normal. That one's a bit better. Still a bit too tight but a bit better. Double crochet right next door chain one. You're going to do this down the length and when you get to the very end what you're going to have is you're going to have your space and a double crochet at the very end. But I'll show you that here in a minute. So we have our row three finished. Um, here at the end is our last double crochet of three including our deep one and our, la our chain one for the gap and our last double crochet to actually end the row. Um, to go on to row four, you're going to chain four times. The first three are going to act as your first double crochet and the last one is going to act as your gap. Remember we're actually mirroring the um, row just below. So we're going to double crochet in those three immediately below. There's no weird spikes or gaps or anything like that. You're just going to imitate it completely going down the line. And since my yarn, look at that, is in a big old nasty knot on the card, I'll meet up with you in just a minute. Okay, we finished rows one through four, and now we're going to start with the fifth row. I've changed my color, and I'm going to chain three. Tacked is my first double crochet. Um, you get to get right into the fun deep stitches right away. Your next one, you're going to go into the gap at the bottom of the second color and you're going to do your deep double crochet. You're going to double crochet right next door, chain, skip one and start all over again all the way down that length. Um, when you fin get to this end you're actually going to flip and you're going to mirror all the way down to the other end and we'll be changing colors yet again. Okay, I finished my fifth and sixth rows. I have chained three to start row seven. And basically at this point, you're just kind of repeating these two over and over again. And see this one, we did the chain of four, skipped a stitch, and then started our threes. So that's what we're gonna do here. And I only did my three, so there, you're going to do your chain of four, skip a stitch, and do your first double crochet. You're going to do your first big double crochet in the next gap. Shimmy it up. And keep going. And basically that's just how the, the stitch um, is used and how it grows. Um, my preference is to use alternating colors. I think that's the prettiest. This is my dark teal, light teal, bright pink version. And then I, um, I also made one that was alternating colors here um, in black and neons. Neon yellow and neon pink to be exact. And um, I think I prefer using at least three colors alternating because it gives it the more staggered look. It's less, I don't know, uniform. I just think the one on the right is prettier. But it's totally up to you. Um, the stitch is really easy. If you've got those double crochets and chains down, it's just a matter of counting and keeping track where you are. After a certain amount of time, it's kind of a mindless stitch. And that's what I like the best because I don't mind, you know, investing an hour getting things set up and right and then just being able to knock it out while, 
you know, I watch a couple episodes of the Tudors or something. So, um, that is the Larksfoot Crochet oh, Larks Foot Crochet Stitch. Super easy, super pretty, big impact, great for baby blankets. Just great. Um, if you have any questions or if you want to see some pictures about how this is done, visit dreamalittlebigger.com. That's my website. And that's where more information will be. And there will be a link somewhere down here. And it was great talking to you. Dreamalittlebigger.com. Bye, y'all.